Okay, so while waiting for some bits and pieces to arrive, um, I decided to play around with this a little bit. Now this is from uh, a Gary's m magnetic motor, which I have been thinking about replicating for a while. But the um, results of these experiments, I think, are absolutely fascinating, and could possibly hold the key to an awful lot of the flux switching experiments that we've actually seen, and a lot of the electrical generators and magnetic motors that are floating out there. So it could be some way of describing uh, what's going on in these things, and um, some way of maybe of, of utilising it. So I think it could well be a key to what's going on. Now all we've got here is a really just a simple horseshoe magnet. All I've done is taken a couple of screw magnets and glued them onto a bit of steel to make myself a horseshoe. Now handily enough these screw magnets are painted red and blue to tell you which is which. So obviously the um, red one is the um, north and the south one is the blue. Um, all I've done then is put this little bit of metal shim on there. Now a little bit of metal shim is acting as a keeper. Now normally when you put a keeper on a horseshoe magnet, what happens is the magnetic flux is contained within the magnetic circuit that we've just created, and it stays in there. Now because this is so thin, what we've got is an imperfect magnetic circuit, so what we're getting is, um, either here and here, leakage flux. So effectively, the magnetic poles are being forced out this way. I mean, they're much weaker, obviously, because of the circuit, but they're still being forced out this way. So what we've got here is a, south, a north pole at this end, and a south pole at this end. Now, there's enough magnetism in that to pick up a small bit of metal. There we go. Just picked up that tiny bit of metal there. And it will continue to hold that little bit of metal as long as that keep is in place. That in itself is pretty straightforward uh, and not in not what's interesting. What we think about this is that um, as that keeper is brought closer and closer, we'd expect an induced uh, magnet to be um, forced into that keeper uh, and the strength of the field to be proportional to the distance away, which is pretty much standard for magnetism. Um, but something else much, much more interesting actually happens when you do this. If I keep one side of it, this side, touching, and I lever the keeper outward like that and move it back inwards like that, then something different happens. Watch this. So I move it out, and as I get to a point, there's not enough magnetism in that keeper to actually hold that metal on. And, and that would be reasonable, you would think. Now here's the interesting bit. As I move it further out, on the basis of the previous argument, you'd expect that there will still be no magnetism there. But surprise, surprise, So see if I fiddle on with this a bit. There's actually enough in there to hold that bit of metal. So what's happening? Well, that um, south, yep, south pole that you can see is being carried through the keeper to the end there. And at the end where the metal is, is another south pole. Clearly there's a north pole um, where I'm holding it. Now, that will continue until I move it closer. Look at this. When I get about there, the magnetism disappears until I close it up there, in which case it's back again. Sorry, just bear with me. There you go. It's back again, picking up a bit of metal. It's not a very strong field. There we go. Back again, picking up that bit of metal. So, what's happened there? Well, at one point there was magnetism. At another point, as I moved it, there was zero magnetism. At another point, where I actually touch it at the end here, the magnetism is back again. So that magnetic field is being cancelled out completely and then reappears as by magic. So instead of becoming a static mag magnetic field, which is what we're taught to expect, we actually have here a change in dynamic magnetic field. There is another really interesting way to look at that, and I'll show you in what I was looking at earlier. Just give me a chance to rearrange this so you can see this better. Okay, so what we've got here is a compass, as you can see. Let's just make sure that compass is actually turned on. There you go. It, it's a catch, makes it free swinging. If I put that there, then as you'd expect, the north of the needle is now being drawn towards the keeper of this leakage flux. If I hold that still, and I pull that away, and watch what happens. See that? That field is being reversed. So reverse it again, and reverse it again. So we have a reversal of the field. 
Now those are quite weak magnets, and so not immediately obvious, so what I did was run up this. It's just a bit of steel with two neos on it, and then again my little keeper arrangement there on it that I can just lever in and out. So if I hold that, it's quite strong. So if I hold that there, and as you can see when it's opened out, the south of the uh, compass is quite strongly attracted to it. And because it's so strong I can't actually by hand do this particularly well. If I let it close, the north has been attracted. So you've got a complete reversal of the magnetic field at this point in the keeper. It begins south facing. As it closes down, it goes to north facing. And just like in the weaker magnets, somewhere in there must be zero field. It's only really a question of how thick the keeper is, how strong the magnets are, how thick the steel is carrying the flux. So it's a relationship between the construction, let me just rearrange it. Okay, there we are. So it's a relationship between the construction of the thing in terms of the, um, the strength of the magnets, the size of the steel that you're using to absorb the flux. It's a relationship of that. It's a relationship of the size and um, thickness and amount of metal in the keeper arrangement here. And then it's a question of distance of the keeper from the magnets. So as that distance increases to a limit, so see, as that distance increases, then what we've got happening here is that this is inducing a magnetic pole here. And as that closes, the effect of this one is to nullify a magnetic field completely and then reverse it. OK, so what's important about that? Well, I think, and I'm, you know, I'm only guessing here, but I think what's happening here is that instead of having a static magnetic field from permanent magnets that we've always been taught that there is, what we've got is a changing dynamic field. Now, um, although these experiments are very simple and um, not very difficult to replicate, so by all means go for it, it's fascinating stuff, I still think that the key to creating a working magnetic motor, this idea of turning a static field into a dynamic field. Now, uh, until the bits that I'm waiting for arrive, I should probably continue working on this, but I thought it's shared at this stage because, to be honest, such simple experiments giving such, to my mind, dramatic and important results is definitely worth sharing. So, give it a go and see what you think. Thank you.